Hi everyone, welcome to Contemporary Art History. This is Jackie, and today we'll be looking more in depth at painting during the 1980s and 1990s. Today we will explore the ways that this very old medium has persevered and evolved for a more contemporary time. We're going to start today's lecture by looking at Neo Geo, a term that arose during the 1980s. It's short for neo-geometric conceptualism. The artists associated with this movement were interested in appropriation, recontextualization, and expression. The neo-geo artists often quoted from historical sources, but they brought specific meaning to their works. <clears throat> and some of the artists associated with neo-geo are Peter Haley, Ross Blechner, and Ashley Bickerton. Let's start with Peter Haley. Born in 1953 in New York, New York, Haley made a series of paintings that were based on Joseph Albers' homage to the square. Haley thought of the square as, quote, a sign for certain kinds of regimented confining structures in the social landscape. It's hard to tell from these slides, but Haley often incorporated interesting materials and textures into his paintings. He used day glow paints, stucco surfaces, and neon colored wallpapers inside a gallery setting to offset his paintings. For context, here's a slide that compares one of Haley's paintings on the left with an example of Joseph Albers' square painting on the right. Next is Ross Blechner. Blechner was born in Brooklyn, and he attended New York University with Chuck Close and Saul LeWitt. He moved to California with grad for graduate school at the California Institute of Art, and then moved back to New York after school and bought a building in Tribeca. Julian Schnabel rented three floors of this building, and there was also a nightclub in the loft. His early paintings often pay tribute to op art but the series that followed focused on the AIDS epidemic in New York. Many of his paintings continue to explore this theme of the body or body-related ideas, sometimes on a microscopic level, as seen in the bright red bursts of color floating on the surface of this canvas. Outside of Neo Geo, there were many other artists returning to the theme of abstraction during the 1980s and 90s. American artist Elizabeth Murray is an excellent example of this. Her works involved breaking up the traditional canvas space. In 1979-1980, Murray broke a canvas into several shards and left these pieces separate. <coughs> Her style as an artist is informed by cartoons as well as post-war abstraction. Later on, her works included references to recognizable forms such as shoes, tables, cups, etc. These stand-in forms have a very psychological undertone and are meant to be understood as figurative. The psychological undertones in her work can be summarized by this quote by Murray. She said, all my work is involved with conflict, trying to make something disparate whole. Here's another example of a work by Murray in which you can see her range of influences. And here is an installation view of her work at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. This image allows a viewer to see how her works function within a specific space. The paintings of the American artist Terry Winters are also concerned with the idea of space, especially as it applies to the history of painting in modernism as well as more scientific applications of the word, such as cybernetics, mathematical concepts, etc. The Russian non-objective painter Vasily Kandinsky looked to biology for inspiration just like Terry Winters. His work seemed to portray microorganisms in space toward the end of his career in particular. Both Kandinsky and Winters have painted botanical forms like seeds, buds, and spores. For example, in this painting titled Good Government from 1984, seeds, buds, and spores form the central imagery. The color palette of the work also recalls the subtle greens and browns of the natural world. Winter spent three months working on this painting, which he began without a clear title in mind. 
He said that he, quote, thought it looked like one of those maps you saw in grammar school, and it said, good government, and everything was working together. Philip Taff also used a variety of techniques, sourcing abstract art itself as the inspiration for many of his paintings. He called them, quote, representations of abstract paintings. Taft calls from Western and non-Western sources alike, especially interested in decorative motifs. This painting, Big Iris, from 1986, calls from Georgia O'Keeffe's oeuvre with the pop art movement from the, <clears throat> excuse me, the op art movement of the 1960s. And here is an example of an op art painting by Bridget Riley, so the connection is fresh in your mind's eye. Here is another painting by Taft for you to see how he seamlessly blends tropes from architecture, textiles, and other sources of ornamentation. The geometric forms in the compositions of Sean Scully also recall architectural motifs. Born in Dublin and educated in London, Scully has worked with interwoven grids since the beginning of his career. Now let's look at the influence of graffiti and cartoons within the world of painting at this time. We'll start with Keith Haring, a major force of graffiti art in New York City during the 1980s. Haring attended the School of Visual Arts in New York City and he made drawings in the subways and throughout the city. He loved working in public locations with his distinct vocabulary of cartoon-like people such as a radiant child, a barking dog, a flying saucer, or a praying man, alongside other symbols that were easy to read, such as a cross, halo, pyramid, and dollar sign. Because his works were populist and political, he was slow to receive recognition as an artist. In fact, his works were not really appreciated until after his death from AIDS in 1990. In 1997, he received a posthumous retrospective at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. Another artist who died at a young age was Jean-Michel Basquiat. Born in Brooklyn of Haitian and Hispanic descent, Basquiat dropped out of school at age 17. He became friends with Al Diaz, another graffiti writer in Lower Manhattan, and together they both used S-A-M-O, which meant same old shit, to sign their work around the city. During the summer of 1980, Basquiat's works were included in the Times Square show, a group exhibition produced by the artist's collective collab. They created a space within an abandoned building on 42nd Street, and after the show, Basquiat went solo. His works had unexpected compositions, as seen as this one from 1984. Four years later, he died early of a drug overdose. We've already mentioned artists in this lecture who were impacted by the AIDS epidemic. Well, in 1981, epidemiologists linked the outbreak of pneumonia in homosexual men in L.A. with an aggressive cancer that was afflicting gay men in New York City. The syndrome was given the name, quote, gay-related immune deficiency and was later linked to HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. The apathetic posture of the United States government was a motivating factor for many artists. In 1988, the Museum of Modern Art organized an exhibition of Nicholas Nixon's works, photographs that included a series of individuals dying of AIDS. Some critics thought that because Nixon was a heterosexual, these images were more voyeuristic than empathetic. ACT UP, which stood for the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, organized a show called Let the Record Show, which was installed in the windows of the new museum in Lower Manhattan along Broadway. In 1988, several people from ACT UP founded Grand Fury, an advocacy group dedicated to raising awareness and inciting action on behalf of AIDS sufferers. <coughs> Silence equals death. This poster with its succinct and political message was designed by the Silence Equals Death Project. It was later subsumed into ACT UP in 1987. And this slide shows an installation view of Let the Record Show exhibition at the New Museum in New York. A scrolling electronic reader board at the Let the Record Show exhibition at the New Museum of Art stated the following. 
Let the Record Show, by Thanksgiving 1981, 244 known dead. No word from the president. By Thanksgiving 1982, 1,123 known dead. No word from the president. By Thanksgiving 1987, 25,644 known dead. No word from the president. President Reagan. Quote, I have asked the Department of Health and Human Services to determine as soon as possible the extent to which the AIDS virus has penetrated our society. This is a portrait of the prolific writer, photographer, and painter David Wojnarowicz. He was part of the scene in the East Village of New York. He developed a collage aesthetic that was centered on the brutality of life especially his pain growing up as a gay person in the United States amidst a backdrop of homophobia and AIDS. This work, titled Fire from 1987, was made the same year that the artist was diagnosed with AIDS. It was also the same year that his lover, Peter Hujar, the photographer, died of the disease. Martin Wong began his career by working as a courtroom artist, and his works were a combination of public writing, graffiti, sign language, and charts of the constellation. The Big Heat from 1988, shown here, depicts two firemen in each other's arms as the buildings burn in the background. Attorney Street, Handball Court with autobiographical poem by Pinheiro from 1982 to 1984, depicts a landscape of Lower Manhattan with Wong's stylized sign language notation of a poem. Group Material was co-founded by Tim Rollins. It was an artist collective that focused on curatorial strategies for, quote, the conditions necessary for making communication possible, according to one critic. In 1984, <clears throat> Tim Rollins created a workshop with students called Kids of Survival, COS. This group used texts such as the autobiography of Malcolm X, Franz Kafka's America, and Flaubert's Temptation of St. Anthony to connect the themes of these books to contemporary life. The Temptation of St. Anthony, the Trinity from 1990, is a three-canvas work that uses the text by Flaubert as its starting point. It's an extended conversation about the temptations of physical desire. The red and black ring was made from blood, which made viewers, of course, think about AIDS. We're gonna to close today's lecture with two examples of artists working with art historical sources for inspiration. First up is John Curran. Born in 1962 in Boulder, Colorado, Kern received his BFA in 1984 from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh and his MFA in 1986 from Yale University here in New Haven. His works emulate paintings from the 16th and 17th centuries, especially those from Northern Europe, but the subjects are often highly eroticized and sardonic. For reference, here we see a painting from the 16th century by Lucas Cranach the Elder. Curran frequently references paintings and portraits from the old masters, but he adds controversial elements taken from pornography, pinups, and B movies into his works. The luscious paintings of Lisa Yuskovich are similar to Curran in many ways. Both paint figures and the presence of art historical references is very evident for both artists as well. Technical and masterful, Yuskovich's paintings mine art history, yet in her work, the gaze and the attention of the figures are often turned inward. The overall turn of the work, tone of the work, is less sardonic than Kern, but just as cutting. We began today's lecture by looking at Neo Geo paintings by Peter Halley. Then we looked at the unconventional works of Elizabeth Murray. We examined the biological influences in the paintings of Terry Winters, and we saw the influence of architecture in paintings by both Philip Taff and Sean Scully. We looked at examples of cartoons and graffiti in art, such as this work by Keith Haring. 
We looked at some examples of artworks and exhibitions that responded to the AIDS epidemic in this country. And finally, we viewed examples of two artists sourcing art history with a more contemporary edge. In a nutshell, painting during the 1980s and 1990s was expansive with many overlapping concerns and trends. Thank you very much for joining me today. I will see you all soon.